So, uh, Philippe, you want to lead us off with how did you first learn of Cardano? Okay, well, I first learned of Cardano through Charles's whiteboard video, as did many people. Uh, it was a great whiteboard video released at the end of 2017, I believe November-ish. It might have been late October-ish, but that whiteboard video really introduced me into Cardano. But I want to give a little backdrop of my journey looking for this out. Like, it, it, it just made sense. And, you know, I was getting into crypto a lot more during the summer of 2017. I was investing, 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 moving things around, looking at different all pro all projects, like Sebastian was saying, a lot of them didn't catch my eye. Um, you know, I actually go and look through the white paper, although I don't understand everything all the time. I still look to see if there's a business model behind it. And then I saw Charles's video and, you know, Charles, he saw, he's very eloquent and what he was saying resonated with me completely. And it really got the gears turning in my head. And I introduced myself earlier as a dreamer, as a person that literally wants to exist within a system. And I think that Charles provided that through that whiteboard video, because one of the things that he stretched on was this idea of interoperability. And this was a very powerful term to me. Um, I, I saw that there could be a connection between, um, you know, the bridge between the regular fiat world and the crypto world is sometimes very unclear. And that 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 term really allows me as a an investor to understand that, you know, it's not one system dies, the other the other prospers, but two systems can live simultaneously. And, you know, that, that's just what really led me to this project. Um, I bring some props as well. And I have a story about this whole idea of um, like people within the system and moving on to crypto. And basically I was at the bank the other day and this lady next to me was saying something around the lines like, oh, uh, she went up to the teller and it was probably 9 a.m., 10 a.m. in the morning and the line is full. And of course you're waiting in line to get your money out of the bank, which doesn't make much sense. But the lady in front of me, goes up to the teller and asks the teller, can I have a thousand, can I withdraw a thousand dollars? I'm going on vacation next week. And it was the weirdest question I've ever heard because like it's the person's account with the person's money and they're asking like permission. I know it was meant as more of a lighthearted joke, but like the matrix thing in my head just like clicked. Like there needs to be just this, this system can't be the only one that exists. And then Couple that with all the information that came out with the whiteboard videos and checking out the website and just seeing the level of professionalism and the level of business that IOHK does. I mean, not only was this like a dreamer cryptocurrency project, but IOHK is an actual legitimate business. So many crypto projects out there are not businesses. They do not have, they do not run a business. And if you do not run a business on top of your project, your project will fail because the balance sheets are going to fall out of whack. As soon as your ICO money runs out, that's it. But IOHK is a cryptocurrency starter. They're successful. And that coupled with Charles, coupled with the direction I saw the project going, that's really my introduction into Cardano. All right. Thanks, Philippe. I'll roll with the uh, with this one here. How did I first learn of Cardano? Well, uh, this is an interesting story. I was in my kitchen. And uh, it was about this time last year, early November, maybe late October, roughly about this time frame. And I had just start, started leaning towards investing more into cryptocurrencies. And my sons were talking about ADA. Now, they were talking about all different kinds of things. EOS was starting to come online. Um, and there was a couple other ICOs that were big in name. I had not heard of the Cardano ICO, but it was about this time last year. And uh, so I, I have two sons and my one son was talking about it pretty passionately about the information. He said, Dad, you got to check out this video. And he pulled up the Charles Hoskinson whiteboard video that Philippe had just mentioned. And I watched this. Now, the interesting thing is in, in my line of work, 
there are scientists who do this kind of work. I don't understand the math like Sebastian, you know, like Sebastian came, uh, you know, he, under, he understands the math. I don't get the math. I look at the final output product of these really brilliant scientists and uh, they'll explain to me how things work and how they develop the math. And as long as I can see the output product and understand it and use it as a tool to do my job, I'm good. You know, it almost doesn't even matter. What was that math in the background? And when I saw Charles explaining this, it really got my attention. And I said, I'm going to go find this stuff. And fortunately, my, my sons had already done the research on it. And I knew where to go to go find it. And I started getting involved with Cardano, started investing in it. And maybe a week later, a video from uh, uh, Dr. Duncan Coots came out. And I was like, wow. OK, I mean, these videos were starting to knock my socks off. And I thought, I'm not seeing this level of science and research being applied. Um, there were the, the three big major factors that uh, that Charles described what a cryptocurrency has to do. But once I started seeing all the research going into it and uh, the, the thought, I thought I realized this is the thing for me, or at least this definitely has a future. So not really the, the business side. I, I wasn't even thinking of the business side. It hadn't even crossed my mind, as Philippe had mentioned, um, from the business angle that, that IOHK has, which is awesome, and Emergo has, which is great. Um, what was crossing in my mind was the science behind it and the fact they were doing all this research and that there were white papers that could be read. Although there were many other white papers out on cryptos, uh, that particular white paper caught my attention. So that's really how I first learned of Cardano. And as more uh, videos came out from IOHK, it kept grabbing more and more of my attention. I said, wow, these these guys are really guys and gals. Um, uh, Meredith did one on security. And I, I realized, wow, they are very proactive in getting these videos out. They know how to communicate. And I think the, the between the, the science, they're able to communicate science to me, the average guy, and they were able to communicate the via these excellent YouTube videos. I mean, I just have to say they're great. And that's all there's to it. Um, and that's what hooked me. And that's when I said, you know what? I'm going to dive way deep into this line because I caught it early enough to where I can still, you know, I can make money off it because that's all why we do this. But I can also learn from it and maybe be a, maybe somehow be a pioneer in this field, something that, you know, I've never been able to do before. I, I hadn't caught it early enough, but this is one that I caught early enough where I could get heavily involved. And that's where we're at now. So that's my story. That's my, uh, how did I first learn of Cardano? Sebastian, you're on deck, sir. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of got back into the space as the hype kind of started building up around it. And I was like, well, I, I wonder what's changed, right? If the price is suddenly skyrocketing or whatever, like hopefully something's changed in the technology and you know there there's a reason for this this hype. And I started start looking into it and sure enough found Ethereum and I thought it was a really cool idea, the the concept of you know dApps and whatever. And so I started kind of doing a really deep dive into Ethereum, learning smart contracts, reading through the yellow paper and all this kind of stuff. And you know, obviously every project has its engineering flaws and whatever, so it's not a perfect project. But I, you know, I was, I was getting pretty involved in it, not in the community side, but just on the technology side. And at the same time, I was, you know, keeping my eye out open for other projects. You know, what else is going on in the space? How else has it evolved since I kind of came in uh, last time? And that, that's when I found uh, Cardano. And so I was reading Cardano and the first line description was something like, you know, a cryptocurrency based off of Haskell. And I was like, oh my God, I, I got to read more into this. Because at the time, as kind of like a amateur Haskeller, which, you know, kind of came naturally from doing, a, studying both computer science and math. And so I was like, oh man, somebody's building a cryptocurrency based off of this, I got to check this out. And I was looking into it more. And I think what really hooked me was the fact that Cardano was a, a project with mathematical rigor. And this is like a, a concept that is, you know, really drilled into you if you take a, a math major in university. The fact that whenever you, you make a statement, you have to have a rigorous proof for it. And the ability to write a proof that is rigorous and, you know, understand the importance of a rigorous proof is basically what a math major is, is trying to teach you. And so, 
In fact, like uh, I, one kind of story that, that that stuck with me when I was going through, you know, math courses in university was, you know, I had like a third year or a third year uh, course in math at some point, and we had a midterm. You know, you get a midterm, you have you know an hour and a half to solve it. It's like five questions or whatever, and they're fairly long and complicated questions. And I was going through one of them, and I had the question right, except near the end, I, I like messed up. And I ended up getting a zero on that question. I went to the professor, like, after he handed back the, you know, graded midterms. I was like, come on, a zero? Like, I, I got the entire proof correct, except, like, the last part. I made some mistake and whatever. And his answer is, you know, what? for a mathematical, you know, proof, there's, you know, two results. Either it's true or it's not. And your case is not. And, you know, it's, if it's not true, it gets a zero. And, you know, I think that's kind of, I still think that's kind of too strict for, you know, educational purposes. But I mean, in the real world, that that is true, right? If if you have a proof, and it's 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 false, it's not worth anything, right? You you made a mistake, and that's kind of the the importance of math mathematical rigor, right? You have to have a formal proof that your your statement really is correct. And I thought not only the the people working on Cardano uh, respect this, they made it like a fundamental pillar of their project. And, you know, there's other cryptocurrencies that do dabble in research and do dabble in implementation of research papers, but none of them really had it as a, a you know, fundamental pillar such as Cardano. And that's kind of got, got me really interested in the project. And the kind of as I was going through it and the documentation and the code and everything I was reading through, you know, I realize this is a very technical project. And if you don't have kind of a background on this topic, there's, there's no way you could understand what's going on. And I thought, you know, this is maybe a unique role for me to play in kind of an educational side that I've always liked teaching people and this kind of stuff. And so, you know, I, I even in high school, I used to teach younger kids. In university, I ran a mentor course for free for other students. And I always liked this kind of teaching stuff. So I thought, you know, I, I can, you know, leverage my knowledge to help people understand this. And so I started a YouTube channel to kind of you know upload some videos of me talking about the project and that's kind of how I got started.